Well, it seems that Canadians had some very strong opinions around the prison transfer of an infamous serial killer. The Canadian press has obtained hundreds of messages that Canadians sent to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his cabinet ministers. This comes after the serial killer Paul Bernardo was transferred to a medium security prison. Mr. Bernardo is serving a life sentence for the kidnapping, sexual assault and murder of two Ontario schoolgirls in the 1990s and the manslaughter death of his then wife's 15-year-old sister. People wrote imploring the government to intervene, saying how vividly they remember the violent details of Mr. Bernardo's case. Well, joining us now is Mr. Tony Baldinelli, Member of Parliament for Niagara Falls and the MP who introduced a bill that would have changed the rules on prison transfers. Sir, welcome to Forum Daily. Thank you for having me and providing this opportunity. And for some uh, further background into this case, what was the justification of this prison transfer from correctional services and where, what do you uh, make of this uh, justification as well? Well, the the justification uh, and the use of it uh, by Correctional Services Canada, ultimately in the end, I mean, uh, the people to blame for this decision is this Liberal government. In 2019, uh, they changed the law and uh, they uh, moved uh, prison transfer and uh, prison selection. Uh, the wording that used to be in place uh, used to have necessary the wording necessary restrictions. And in its place, they put uh, the wording least restrictive environment. And so from that count, uh, standpoint, uh, the decision was made by Correctional Services of Canada staff to then transfer a Bernardo. And uh, can you tell us a little bit more about this bill that you proposed uh, that would prevent prison transfers of mass murderers and the reasons why you propose it, sir? Well, it's it's based on the decision of Paul Bernardo himself and and that decision by uh, uh, Correctional Services of Canada. Uh, my office was inundated, I, as I imagine all members of Parliament offices were. And I actually spoke to some of the f- friends of the victims who had asked that, we, we take action, that we speak out against the decision, that we see that something like this never happens again. So I was able to work with my shadow critics for justice and public uh, safety, as well as our, our leader, Pierre Polyev, to put together my legislation, C-342, that would, uh, in essence, change the, the, the legislation back and, and, and put the wording back to necessary restrictions and remove that least restrictive environment wording, which allowed that decision to be made. And what has been the response in Ottawa to your bill, sir? I know reports indicate that this bill was discussed internally by the government, uh, but where do we stand now? Well, right now I've introduced it. And so what uh, I have to wait because it's a private member's bill is to bring it forward for second reading. And so during this 44th parliament, I, I'm kind of uh, at the, uh, a lower on the list. Uh, so I have to work with some of my colleagues to see if we can bring it forward earlier. But that doesn't preclude me from continuing to, to raise the issue, say, as a uh, uh, a unanimous consent motion, for example, and we're going to continue to raise this issue, uh, be it not only in the House, but at committee as well. All right, sir. Now, another thing to consider would be how a bill like this may impact the programs and services, including psychological evaluations and rehabilitation efforts under Canada's correctional services. Uh, so, and, and what is your overall stance on these rehabilitation efforts as well? Well, my, my legislation speaks to the fact that those who, who commit multiple murders or are classified as dangerous offenders get a maximum security classification and must serve their sentence in a maximum security institution. That does not preclude any of the programming that, that would be provided by correctional services. This is dealing with prison selection. All right, sir, just about a minute left here, but uh, what are some next steps for you as you await this debate of your bill uh, at the second reading this fall? Well, we're going to be coming back uh, September 18th. My hope is to work with my colleagues uh, on the conservative side and and see if we can move this legislation up forward uh, to an earlier time to introduce second reading and also work with my uh, colleagues on committee to see if we can raise this issue with regards to Paul Bernardo, prison transfers, the, uh, the actions of correctional services at either Justice Committee or Public Safety. All right, something we'll be keeping our eyes on. Mr. Baldinelli, thank you again for your time today. Thank you.